My name is David and you're watching the 737 Sim Guide on how to perform at your very best in the simulator time and time again. So during these uncertain times, many pilots are looking to keep themselves in the best possible position by renewing old ratings or upscaling their current skills, uh, such as doing ATPL skills tests or um, just preparing for any sim evaluation or assessment. So what I've done today is put together a presentation on raw data ILS. So stay tuned and keep watching. Firstly, remember, what's your objective? Your objective is to fly the ILS manually without the flight directors within one dot, localizer and glide slope deflection. This will normally be done from an intercept heading, possibly from a platform altitude, but you may also have to be descending down to the platform altitude as well. There's no rule as to what presentations you can have in front of you. Some pilots prefer the display with the map display, whilst others prefer the conventional display with the ILS pointers on the nav display. You may also like to consider using the flight path vector. Some pilots find that very helpful. The key to success is a quick instrument scan and make small corrections, smooth corrections. There are two instruments that will give you a prediction to the future. Those are the vertical speed and the track line in the PFD. That's if the heading is selected on the runway heading. So if your ILS and your glide slope needles are in the right place, you're on the ILS, you're on the glide path, your next focus will be maintaining the correct vertical speed somewhere around seven to 800 feet per minute. And two, the track line, if you put the track line from the PFD right in the middle of the heading bub, now, with those two instruments in the right place, the ILS, glide slope, and the localizer should stay exactly where you want them. Then it would just be a small case of small adjustments on the thrust in order to maintain the speed. So let's go into the simulator and have a look. This one has been performed from the ILS on the localizer already. And you'll note that the gear is taken already on the glide path. Let's go and take a look. You take the gear as soon as you get the glide slope alive you'll find that you're going to need to increase the thrust before you start the descent this is going to increase the workload my recommendation is that you brief and you state when you're going to put the gear and you're going to say you're just going to delay it slightly and take the gear somewhere around half a dot half a dot deviation and call for the gear Notice here how when the gear has been selected, there's just been a momentary distraction with reducing the speed that the vertical speed indicator comes to nearly zero. So we already know what's going to happen next. We're going to start losing the glide slope. So keep that scan going. Coming. Given. Engine start switches. Continuous. Speed brakes. Arms. Land again. Down. So now a positive correction is being made to the vertical speed in order to regain the glide slope which is just starting to edge away. We're 
good instrument cross check here has shown that the airspeed is where we want it to be, so now we have to anticipate very slightly and increase the thrust. A good ballpark figure for you to start with for flaps 30 is round about 57%. You can always make small adjustments, um, give or take a percent or two, and uh, bear in mind the uh, different weight of the aircraft. So the best way to control the, um, the pitch and the speed during the descent is to pitch for the vertical speed that you want. So if you're above the profile, like in this case, you need to pitch down a couple of degrees, look at the vertical speed, go for just over 1,000 feet per minute, depending on how far the deviation is. Um, in this case, we've gone for 1,200 feet per minute. Now we're just going to have to make just a small correction on the thrust just to compensate for the now increasing speed. Here we can see that the crosswind is about 10 knots. So the max drift at a ground speed of 140 knots is only going to be around half of it. So we're only looking at five degrees either side. So with the track line right in the middle of the heading bug, you can see that the heading that you're looking for is somewhere around five degrees to the right, so about 0.83, with the inbound course as 0.78. So here a correction is being made somewhere around 0.88, holding and now that the localizer pointer is coming into the middle a correction has come back to getting that track line back into the middle of the heading again one thousand now you can see that the vertical speed is just a little bit too high so that's our future predictor and it's going to tell us that we're going to get low on the glide path left for a few seconds unchecked without bringing it back to where we need and that's what actually happens. Five hundred. Four hundred. Remember that as you get closer to the runway, the sensitivity is going to increase because you're being channeled in like the uh, cone shape on the localizer and the glide slope. Three hundred. Approaching minimums. Two minimums. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. So in summary, although the raw data ILS is very much a skill-based um, procedure, there is still a couple of techniques, a couple of tricks that you can apply that will help you to perform your very best raw data approach to get you hired, to get you passing that ATPL skills test. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and remember, if a picture is worth a thousand words, how much is a video worth?
Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed filming and sharing this information with you from videos and tutorials from inside the simulator. If you need any more support on license extensions or type ratings, license proficiency checks, or just preparation for that important simulator check or an evaluation, then email me at 737simguide at gmail.com. And if I can't help you, I'll find somebody who can.